together we'll arise and reach out to all the nations as we are one in you gentile and jew for the key of abraham has been given to mankind and the key of abraham opens all doors now, join Archbishop Dominica Bierman in Unify PNG with Israel. And the key of Abraham opens all doors. Repentance is the word Teshuvah. Teshuvah means what? Turning around. Turning around. Returning to the arms of the Father for the purpose of restoration. Because if there is still strife, and there is still bickering. That means that somehow the tree of knowledge of good and evil still has root in your life. That means that somewhere you're not having that intimate relationship with him and from him to the other people. Let me tell you that love doesn't mean that we don't rebuke. Love doesn't mean that we don't correct. In fact, because I love the people under my care, I often rebuke them. Because I love the people under my care, I often correct them. And if I would not rebuke them and I would not correct them, they would be like the sons of Eli that brought Ichabod where the glory departed from the camp of Israel. But you see, religion has conditioned most people to not being able to receive correction because they instantly equate correction and rebuke a healthy correction, a healthy rebuke, a healthy instruction, they equate it to rejection. But this is absolutely a lie. Correction from a loving father, from a loving mother, correction from a loving leader, hallelujah, instruction from a loving father, a loving mother, a loving leader, that is love. That is true love. And that is love that causes you to grow healthy and strong. Sometimes I have people under my care that think they know better and they are stubborn. I still correct them and finally when they decide to be stubborn, I say, okay, well, fine. Do whatever you want. And you know what happens sometimes? They do whatever they want, and then all of a sudden, years later, they come back or say, Oh, Archbishop, I'm so sorry. Ah, you were right, and I've gone through the mill, and I've gone through these terrible hardships, and these terrible things happened to me. And the only thing I can say is I just look at them, and I say, You know what? I warned you. I would have loved to save you from this. But some people learn the school of hard knocks. It happens. Some people love to go through the school of hard knocks. But I want you to know this from this moment. That if we are going to show the world something different than all the other denominations of Christianity, and when I'm saying that I hope that among us we have people from all denominations of Christianity, because I believe that Yeshua is above all of the denominations of Christianity, and that we need to enthrone him above any denomination of Christianity because we are not dealing with going into another religious system. We are not establishing another denomination. I forbid it completely. Let me be heard today and forever in Papua New Guinea. There is no such denomination called Archbishop Dominica Bierman. And there will be no such denomination called the map revolution. The map revolution is a wave of the spirit. It's a movement, but not a denomination. This entire movement that is a wave of the Ruach, it's a wave of restoration. A wave of the gospel sent again from Zion back to the nations after 2,000 years of it being missing in the nations in this capacity. No, this is a move for the purpose of unification, not for the purpose of division. It's for the purpose of bringing truly unified and unified PNG with Israel, unify the believer with the 
Messiah unify the believer between each other and the only way that we can come to that place is written in John 17 and I'm going to read this to you and today you're going to be able to understand it much better than ever before and tonight we're going to continue on this but we are going to inspect as the Holy Spirit lets me sometimes I plan things and it takes me another way but as the Holy Spirit lets me uh, I believe my plan and his is too to inspect this thing about unity from all aspects from all sides from all directions until we can take the devil the sting of division from our midst is that a good plan so I'm going to tell you what it says here hallelujah about unity and there's so much about unity in the scriptures and I'm going to talk to you about it as we move from meeting to meeting you're gonna have the full seminar about this and you will be able to function in it and it says this Yeshua is speaking here to the Jewish disciples 2000 years ago so put yourself in the context he's not speaking to the Baptists He's not speaking to the Catholics. He's not speaking to the Lutherans. He's not speaking to the Pentecostals. He's not speaking to any one Christian denomination. He's only speaking to the Jews. He's speaking to the disciples. He's talking about the disciples. He's talking about these Jews there. There's yet no Gentiles that have come in. Okay? So he has people like me and Rabbi there. And he's talking about disciples or apostles that were all Jewish. And he says this, make them holy in the truth. Your word is truth. Just as you sent me into the world, so I have sent them. Who is them? This Jewish disciple. So I have sent them into the world. And for their sakes, that means the Jewish disciples, I make myself holy so that they also may be made holy in truth. I pray not on behalf of these Jewish disciples only. Now we are going to start talking about the Gentiles. I pray not about these Jewish disciples only, but also for those who believe in me through their message. So now we see Yeshua is praying. Stay with me, Yeshua is praying. And he's praying for his Jewish disciples. Stay with me, praying for his Jewish disciples. And when he finishes praying for his Jewish disciples, he said, and I pray also for those that will come that are not them, those Gentiles that will join them, I pray for them, but they are going to join the Jewish disciples according to their message. In other words, these Gentiles were going to hear the message of who? The message of Martin Luther? The message of St. Augustine? The message of Constantine? No. They were going to hear the message that was spoken by the Jewish apostles and the Jewish disciples of 2,000 years ago. And if they would be listening to this message that was spoken by the Jewish apostles and the Jewish disciples of 2,000 years ago, then this would happen to answer the prayer of Yeshua. Because he continues praying here. And he said, I pray not on behalf of these only, these Jews only, but also for those Gentiles, I'm paraphrasing, who believe in me through their message, that they all may be one. That they all may be echad. Shema Israel, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai echad. Here, O Israel, Yahweh our Elohim is one. That they may be one. And we are going to see here that the key for the unity is not that the Jews join Christianity, but that the Gentiles join the Jewish disciples and the Jewish message and the Jewish gospel that was preached 2,000 years ago. 
that is how unity comes. Unity will never come because the Christian denominations are trying to unite with each other. That is not the way unity will come because it is not appointed to be. That is what brought the division in the first place. No, unity will come where Jews and Gentiles, so actually Gentiles, John Jews and Jews and Gentiles join together in the same gospel, in the same word, in the same Yeshua, in the same kingdom, then unity will come and we will be a chad. We will be one. I've been to Israel four times and I've taken Archbishop's tour for GRM Bible School on wheels four times in Israel. And I can say that every time I go to Israel, on every tour I go, it's never the same as the last time I went. And every time I go, I'm always learning something new in the land. And Archbishop's um, tour is never like any other tour that you would go and attend. And um, for me personally, I enjoyed it so much because that is when in the land Archbishop does all the teaching from site to site, from location to location, and indeed and truly, it's the Torah, it's the Bible coming alive from Genesis to Revelation, and this, you will never find it in any other tour. And then we're gonna see what kind of unity is this. Because he continues praying here, and he said, just as you, Father, are in me and I am in you so also may they be a God one in us so that the world may believe that you sent me well so he's saying that this unity that will come when Gentiles join Jews in a Jewish gospel a Jewish message that comes out of Zion out of Israel through a people that were chosen from the beginning of time to the nations of the earth, through a Jewish Messiah with a Jewish name that is Yeshua, when the nations join in with that Jewish Messiah and with that Jewish gospel, I didn't say with Judaism as a religion, did I? No, because I am not leading you to any religious system. God forbid, you've had plenty of religious systems already. But you are being led back to the original gospel made in Zion. You are being led back to the kingdom of God when he said, let your kingdom come and let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And he said, now so that the kingdom will come on earth as it is in heaven, we need the unity. We need the Echad. But this unity can only be if the Gentiles join the Jews according to the Jewish message, not the Christian message. If we understood this today, we're gonna to understand everything. Because this is not a Christian message. The gospel has never been a Christian message. A Christian message is what Constantine brings on the scene after 325 through the Council of Nicaea in order to unify all of the churches politically and religiously. And he brings on and he establishes a Christian message where the heart of that Christian message was no Jews allowed here. When the heart of that Christian message was nothing from the Old Testament, which is nothing but the Holy Scriptures, the Tanakh allowed here. Nothing from the obsolete law of Moses allowed here. That's not the law of Moses. It's the laws of God and the commandments of God and the Torah and the instructions of God in righteousness. The heart of the Christian gospel coming out of Constantine in 325 is rejection against the Jews and everything Jewish and it is signed by one sentence in that council that says as follows let us therefore separate ourselves from the detestable company of the Jews because the Savior has showed us another way so we know that from that moment the gospel of Christianity had everything to do with rejecting the Jewish gospel that came out of Zion. 
And now we are in the 21st century. And if we do not take back the gospel made in Zion, if we do not restore it back, then we are going to self-destroy. In fact, we are going to self-destroy with strife and with sin, with immorality, with homosexuality, with everything that's coming to the church. Everything is allowed. All paganism is allowed. And we can love each other forever and stay in our sins forever, except that's not the love and that's not the echad that the scriptures talk about. Witchcraft is running rampant in the church. Idolatry is running rampant in the church. Rebellion is running rampant in the church. Accusations constantly, day and night. Satan is the accuser of the brethren, but the accuser of the brethren is sitting well inside of all of the churches, accusing that brethren and the other brethren and the other brethren. If we don't get it back, we are going to self-destroy, beloved ones. Yahweh told me that already in 1993 when I wrote my first book, The Healing Power of the Roots, and he said that the, the, the restoration of the Jewish roots of the faith is a matter of life and death because the church has been like a rose cut off from her garden for two days but on the third day if she's not replanted back she will surely die and he said surely die and the two days is like 2,000 years because one day is like a thousand years to Yahweh. Two days is 2,000 years. The third day is the third millennium. And we are in the third millennium. And if we do not unite again in the way that he said to unite, when he said, when the Gentiles come, join the Jews in a Jewish gospel made in Zion, not in a Christian gospel made in Rome. Come on, somebody give a good clap of them. <laughs> I have read most of um, Archbishop Dominic Biemen's books and one of the favorite is Healing Power of the Roots and on its cover you will see life or death and it's a very uh, touching message that's the part that took my attention because and I really wanted to read it all through I couldn't put that book away I read it all the way through and it really is life or death once we know the roots of the our faith we will understand what we are doing in life. If we don't really know where the roots of our faith are, then we are lost in the wilderness. And it's a very powerful book, and I encourage anyone who can buy it to read it. And now, back to Unify PNG with Israel and Archbishop Dominica Bierman. And so that we would understand, beloved ones, what he meant about the unity, because some people say, okay, well, let's be in unity in whatever we can agree. Let's just be in unity, you know, let's, let's agree to disagree on most other things. We're going to deal with this during all this time. We're going to deal, what does it mean, one baptism, one Lord, one faith, one spirit. How come that he said that we need to have one baptism, one Lord, one faith, one spirit, and we don't see it? Where is it? Where has it been all these years? This is why this restoration is so mandatory. Because he said only when they are one, when Gentile unites to Jew in a Jewish gospel made in Zion through their message, like the message of the Jewish apostles 2,000 years ago, then the world will believe. Then the world will believe. Not will come to religion, no. Then the world will believe. We want all of Papua New Guinea to believe. Because you know, I'll tell you something. 97% of Papua New Guinea is a Christian. But I read that at least as much of that is idolatry. Right. So how can it be that you have 97% Christian and maybe 90% idolatry? No, how can, how, can, how can then Christianity and idolatry cohabitate together? Are you with me what I'm telling you? I mean, whatever happened to the first commandment that says you shall have no other gods before me? What happened to that one? That's just one of the ten, but that's the number one of the ten. What happened to that commandment on which the entire Torah and the prophets stand? You shall love Yahweh, your Elohim, the Lord your God, with all of your heart, your mind, and your strength. Well, if you love Yahweh, your Elohim, with all of your heart, mind, and strength, you have no time to love another idol.
And the second one, just like the first one, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. What happened to those two commandments on which they tied to run the prophet's hand? What happened? Where did it go? Wow. Oriana kia soto. Masata kia namashaka. Ile le bakaya manamahando kise. Karamahana makahie de kiyando kabaha. Italele katanama soto ramahana ki alaba sho. Ia mareki kando soto ha. My children. Oh, how I desire to fill you with my glory. Oh, how I desire. Will you today lay down all of your weapons against each other? Will you lay down all of your weapons against each other? Will you lay down all the pointing of the finger and choose today to love me first? To love me above your denomination. To love me above your religious traditions. To love me above all that you have learned. To love me above all. Are you willing today, my children? Are you willing to lay down everything that divides us? Everything. So that we can be one. Just like the Father and the Son are one. The Father and the Son do not have different opinions. The Father and the Son do not have different doctrines. They do not have different theologies. The Father and the Son live in truth. And therefore, Yeshua said, sanctify them with the truth in John 17, 17. Your word is truth. But if the word has been misinterpreted, through Gentile Christian eyes for 1,800 years or more. What can we expect? But today, Yahweh is bringing back the understanding of His Word. He is removing the veil from our eyes, hallelujah, so that we can become one, just like the Father and the Son are one, so that Jew and Gentile can be one in the Messiah. And when Jew and Gentile will be one in the Messiah, all of Papua New Guinea will believe and will get rid of its idols because it will not be Christianity that can cohabitate with idolatry pretty well, but it will be the gospel of the kingdom that absolutely cannot cohabitate with any the other God but the God of Israel and the God of Israel alone. Hallelujah. Only the God of Israel alone. He cannot ever compete with any other gods or any other mask or any other idols of any sort. He just cannot compete because there's no competition. And he forbade those things clearly. And he said, you shall make to yourself no image to worship it of any kind, not over the earth and under the earth and anywhere. Deuteronomy 5. Because the sin of idolatry is visited unto the third and the fourth generation. Ah, beloved ones, that means that when there is 90% idolatry inside of Papua New Guinea and 97% Christianity, it means that nearly every second Christian or more is also an idolater besides being a Christian. And therefore, we can see that Christianity maybe is a type of idolatry too. Because we have idolized a God of our own liking. We have made up a God that doesn't look like the original one. He doesn't look Jewish anymore, it looks Greek. He's called it by a Greek name. He's celebrated with pagan feasts. He, he doesn't look Jewish anymore. Do you see what I'm telling you? But if we lay down like the salmon, and we are willing to go against the current of events. Even if it costs us popularity. And go all the way until you're fruitful. Yeah. You're fruitful in your own lives. And you multiply. And you replenish the earth with the glory of Yah. 
Hallelujah. Then could it be that next time that I come to Papua New Guinea, we will be able to say that in Papua New Guinea we have 97% born again, spirit filled, messianic, apostolic, prophetic, on fire people. Hallelujah. Why not? Nineveh was saved in one day. Why not? Why isn't it possible that you will go back to your provinces on fire, full of courage, full of strength, full of determination, and you're going to bring the gospel made in Zion and the name of Yeshua, and all of a sudden, like in Nineveh, entire provinces will fall on their knees and repent before the Father in heaven and throw away all of the idols and throw away everything that's obstructing the glory from overtaking this nation and making it into a sheep nation. Yeah. Hallelujah. Is that possible? Yeah. Yes. Because he says you shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. It is possible, beloved one. It is possible. Amen. Yeah. I'm about to finish today. I have a lot more to say. But... I want to just finish with this part of this prayer of Yeshua when he said so that the world may believe that you sent me. The world hasn't believed. Most of the world is in unbelief or idolatry right now. And 2,000 years of supposed gospel have passed. So we haven't obtained the answer prayer to Yeshua. Could it be beloved ones that you and I, Papa Nogini, we will be the answered prayer to Yeshua. Oh, yeah. What if, what if, what if we become that answered prayer? What if we rejoice the heart of the Father and we rejoice the heart of the Master Yeshua and we rejoice the Holy Spirit and we become that answered prayer? What if? Oh, I hope somebody believes me today. Traveling with Archbishop Dominica in, in Israel, um, the Bible School on Wheels, the best way to, to learn about the Bible and to hear about the Bible stories and for Archbishop to explain in detail all those events that took place at the Sea of Galilee, at the River Jordan, in Nazareth, in Bethlehem, all the way to Jerusalem. That for me is the best trip ever um, in my life. So, so I would recommend it to any one of you out there if there's any place that you need to visit, forget about all Australia and USA, you're going to come back more stressed after you spend more money. Uh, the place that you'll come back with, with so much um, fulfillment is when you visit Israel. I will bless them that bless thee. I will curse them that curse thee. All the families of the earth will now be blessed. As we rise together and reach out to all the nations grafted in the holy tree gentile and Jew.